There are six proven methods that will actually get you into an Ivy League or MIT. Now, most people think getting in is for luck or legacy or geniuses, but it turns out it has nothing to do with that. Because once I got into MIT, I realized everyone else didn't just get into MIT. They got into Harvard, Stanford, and everything else. This means there's a pattern here, something very specific that these top institutions are looking for. These are secrets which are well known and fiercely protected by the rich and upper middle class. They know something that you don't. For those of you who don't know me, welcome to the channel, subscribe. My name is Kyron and I'm a sophomore at MIT and I was the first person from my high school to go to MIT. Today, I'm gonna to show you the reality of college admissions to top institutions so you can use this to gain an advantage in your application. With that, let's get into method number one, which is RSI. RSI stands for Research Science Institute and it's a competitive summer program where a hundred of the world's most accomplished high school students gather at MIT and experience the entire research cycle from start to finish. Basically, participants will learn from distinguished professors, draft a research plan, and deliver a report on their findings. Now, as I was researching RSI, I realized there were actually YouTube videos about how to get into RSI, which I think is saying something about how important it is. MIT has CPW and Yale has Bulldog Days for accepted students to visit their campuses. So when I went to these campus previews, I met so many people who had done RSI. And that's when I realized RSI is a cheat code to these top institutions that I had no idea about. And that's why I want you guys to know about it so you're not left like me. Even in class at MIT today, I still pe see people with RSI laptop stickers and shirts. So this is definitely a program to take note of for all the Ivy Leagues. The second way to get into a top institution is through a feeder high school or prep school. A feeder high school is usually an elite high school which the upper class has access to and provides a nice path into a top tier institution. Now, I will say you do not have to be rich to get into these schools. I'm from Illinois and IMSA is a public school that you have to apply to in high school to get in. Of course, some of these schools are based on where you live, like being in a nice neighborhood, which is how the rich have a little bit of an advantage. If your school sent five or more students to an Ivy League last year, you're probably in a feeder school and have advantage when it comes to college counseling, experience, connections, and you should absolutely be fighting to be at the top of your class to stand out. Now, for those of you who don't go to feeder schools, I understand because I didn't either. It's absolutely not a requirement to go to one. Now, I would consider applying to these feeder high schools just like you would at college. Some even offer scholarships if you can't afford to go to them. Look below the surface and use the resources you have to overcome your challenges. All right, the next method is gonna be sports and athletics. Now everyone knows the Ivy League loves their sports and there's rumors that the academic requirements are lowered for athletes. But the tip here is to actually do a sport that's more niche. And this advantages rich high schools and people that have access to these sports. But what I'm talking about is like rowing, water polo, squash, lacrosse, golf, fencing, ice hockey. All of these sports are recruited for by Ivies, but there's less competition because not everyone can afford the equipment or have access to the coaches required for these sports. My high school actually had none of these sports except golf, but there's still good news. The more common sports like basketball, football, soccer, they're all still recruited for, but you have to be extremely good at these sports because there's more competition. My roommate actually went to nationals for track and field in high school, and that definitely helped his application, but that was no easy feat. And very few can actually get this far. All right, the fourth proven method may be more specific to MIT, but that is International Olympiads. This means IMO, International Math Olympiad, chemistry, biology, physics, computing. I'm sure there's more, I'm not too familiar with these, but there are tons of Olympiad kids here at MIT. This method can be more accessible to international students by showing your potential to these top tier institutions you will want to place at least like bronze or above, which is very difficult. But if you can get that high, your chances of getting into these top tier institutions skyrocket. There are tons and tons of Olympiad kids here at MIT. The fifth method is the one I personally used without knowing, and that is the FIRST Robotics Dean's List Award. Those of you who don't know, FIRST Robotics is an organization where teams of high school students and younger can compete in robotics competitions. I was really lucky to get involved with this in elementary school and worked my way up through the program where I learned tons of skills like, like teamwork and technical skills like Java, CAD, electronics. Right now, there are hundreds of thousands of students on FIRST Robotics teams. 
In order to stand out, there's an award in first called the Dean's List Award. I was one of the 20 people in the world to win that award in 2022. And that was for my work using robotics to help my greater community and for my leadership on my robotics team. I didn't just win that award so I could go to MIT, but once I did win, I realized that opportunities at MIT and Yale really opened up. Several of us who won this award now attend these institutions where we can further our skills in engineering and hopefully change the world. I don't recommend doing FIRST just so you can win the Dean's List Award because first of all, that's a team nominated award and your team has to see you as a leader. And second, everything that was good from FIRST came from my experiences in the program where I wasn't focused on winning this award, but how I could help my team. All right, the final tip is donate a building to Harvard. Thank you for watching and subscribe. Just playing, just playing guys. You know, I gotta get you with some good advice. But the final tip is going to be very difficult because that is changing the world. I met an international student here from Africa who taught his entire class calculus because his teachers went on strike. This is the kind of shit we're talking about. It'll be like publishing some research, having a best-selling novel, curing cancer, some relevant patent. You run an app with millions of users. This is the kind of stuff that could be good for international students as well, because there are some serious issues in the world that you might be more driven to fix. The key with this one is to communicate it effectively in the application. If you've done this, you're already qualified to get in. You just have to write your essays well. If you're doing this, you're the type of person the Ivy Leagues was invented for, and you're giving us all imposter syndrome. So if you can communicate what you did effectively, these top colleges would be glad to have you. There are many more ways to get into top tier institutions like science fair, nonprofits, etc. But these are the proven methods that I've seen work over and over again. The purpose of this video is not to discourage, but to uncover and level the playing field. For those of us who may not have the guidance um, going into the college application process. There are a lot of people who are bright and absolutely deserve a chance at going to these top tier institutions. Thank you all for watching. If you got to the end, let's see, comment the word finished and I will reply to you. Now go ahead and watch this video right here.